one week out from the election, there's there's five potential for scenarios for how this could turn out. It could be a 1980 where Biden wins in a, a landslide, you know, like Reagan did. Uh, it could be 1996 where Biden wins, but the Republicans uh, keep the Senate, as, as happened with uh, with you know Clinton uh, back then. It could be a repeat of 2016. Uh, where Trump loses again the popular vote, but he squeaks by uh, in the Electoral College and, and the Republicans hold on to the Senate. Or it could be one of the really crazier scenarios. It could be a repeat of 1876 when we get a constitutional crisis and the election gets thrown to the House. Or it could be 1800 when we get a tie uh, in the Electoral College and you could have a scenario where you have a President Pence and a Vice President Harris. So of those five scenarios, Peter, what do you think is most likely next Tuesday? Well, I think uh, it's breaking, continuing to break in Biden's direction. But you can't, you know, uh, give up the notion that Biden could throw some of it away. For instance, today, a week out, you know, a week and a day out from the election, with Trump hitting three locales in Pennsylvania all out, Biden took the day off until it, there was a mounting criticism of where the hell was he. And he did a quick event across the state line in Pennsylvania. I mean, that's that's kind of a disturbing sign that a week and a day out that he's uh, that he decided to take a rest after three days off last week. Uh, if he wants it, he better campaign the next seven days nonstop. I think he's going to win. I think the Senate is going to be 50-50, uh, and we're in for uh, a new presidency. Thurgood, so 1980 or, or maybe more like 1996, which is maybe Peter somewhere between the two or something different. All right. I'm, first of all, I'm glad you asked Peter first. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go with a likely win, still possible landslide uh, for Vice President Biden. I think Peter's right. Uh, unfortunately, about the Senate, I would like it to be a bigger margin, but I think it's going to be uh, the balance of the Senate's going to be a squeaker. And they might pick up the seats they need to get to 50, maybe 51. Um, but he absolutely needs that. If he's, going to, if he's going to be successful in the election, to be successful with his initiatives, especially during those crucial first two years, he's got to have the Senate with him in terms of the numbers. I'm going to tell you why I'm optimistic. I'm going to tell you why I'm firmly in the 1980 camp and uh, get your reaction. I, obviously, the campaign we worked on together, you know, in 1996 for Clinton, you know, the battle was over the soccer moms, right? Wh where would that demographic go? Would the, you know, suburban college educated women, would they go Republican or would they go Democratic? And that was almost going to swing the election, whichever way that demographic went. Joe Biden has arguably built the broadest coalition of any presidential campaign in, in modern history. Not only is he going to, you know, turn out, you know, the black vote and the young people vote and the college educated vote, he's got the suburban college educated women going with him. He's got seniors, you know, 65 plus going with him. When you get all demographics going your way, you're not you're not fighting over one, you get you're getting them all going your way, you're setting up a 1980 type landslide like like Ronald Reagan had over Jimmy Carter. Biden could win by eight or nine points. Uh, he may not take every state the, to the extent that Reagan did, but he can win those eight or nine points. And he can take seven, eight senators with him, not just the, the three to get to a 50-50. I mean, do, do you not, uh, are you not as optimistic uh, with that happening, Peter? Well, I think it could happen. But, you know, I, I, think, I think today was, was kind of disturbing. I mean, he's on a roll, he's doing well, and I think I'll take the day off. Come on, the Republic is at stake. I don't care if you're 78 year old, 78 years old. Every goddamn Democrat is working their tails off. You can too, until the election. And uh, you know that he crossed the state line in the afternoon, did an event in Pennsylvania was good. But I hope, I hope he is up in Maine before the end of the election and pushes uh, uh, Sarah Gideon to a win. I hope he flies to North Carolina and helps Tom Tillis. I mean, he ought to be pushing every day of the week between now and next Tuesday and not be taking a snooze uh, instead. 
You want you meant of course tell us to lose in North Carolina. Uh, yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah. yeah, yeah, tell us uh, to lose. Cunningham to win. Uh, and he and he and he could you know he, if he wants to broaden the base he should fly to Montana and help Steve Bullock. Steve Bullock is hanging tough. There was this odd dynamic playing out. On the one hand, you've got by by all reports the White House staff overjoyed at having their boss um, relatively. Um, busy out on the campaign trail and uh, the staff rejoicing over the fact that he's often either trapped on the plane or, or on a on a rally stage and unable to darken their doors or the hallways with his rants or his tweets. Um, but <clears throat> the the benefit of that for, the, for their campaign is he, he really it does appear to be generating a lot of earned media in these locations, which are all battleground locations for, for him and for the campaign. So you've got that dynamic playing out on the, the one hand. And then on the other side, uh, though, the vice president has not been, Vice President Biden has not been burning up the, uh, the plane fuel and hitting these rallies as much as Peter and, and I would like to see. He does have this financial advantage. And so he's able to hopefully balance off this earned media on the president's side with strategic buying. And it, it looks like he had planned that part of his campaign out very effectively for this last stretch. But I, you know, I think we all need to be crossing our fingers that this last round of polls coming out in another day or two um, doesn't show any serious damage from uh, the fracking comment or anything else from the debate. Um, I, I'm skeptical enough about people that the fact, the mere fact that he behaved better, even though he lied every bit as much, if not worse, uh, might be enough to, to give him a little bit of a bump in some locations. So I'd like to see those. Well, you know, at this stage in, in, in 2016, the polls were narrowing by now. I mean, Comey had come out uh, announcing that investigation and, and you saw maybe it was it bad or was it just that there's a natural contraction um, as you get closer to an election. And that hasn't happened yet uh, at this, at this, at this late stage in the race. So, uh, Peter, closing thoughts on, on what to watch this week. Well, I think we, we hopefully will watch the president, the vice president campaigning for the full seven days. I hope he's out every day doing at least one event, perhaps, you know, a rigorous two events a day might, might, might be in order the last week. I think, uh, things are breaking his way. The Manchester Union leader, the most conservative newspaper in the country, uh, who hasn't endorsed a Democrat in a hundred years, who, who I know well, endorsed Joe Biden on Sunday, uh, just prior to Trump re-entering the state, uh, which was a real slap at him. I think that indicates uh, that that Trump is 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 in the hail Mary uh, position. Thurgood, what are you going to be watching? Over the coming week, the post-debate polls, first of all, uh, and the travel schedules. Um, I guess the I guess the silver lining in in the the Biden Harris campaign's travel schedules is that Senator Harris has been doing uh, some travel to states where it appears that she's not so much expanding the map for the national ticket, although it does have that benefit. But it looks like she's helping to try to tip some of these Senate races the right way. I'll be you know, watching where, where Trump goes in particular. And if he's spending any time outside of Pennsylvania, Michigan, or Wisconsin, uh, he is going to have a tough time uh, winning. He needs those three states. He can't win without Florida or North Carolina. So you are certainly expecting there. But I, I, the map is, is moving drastically towards, towards Biden's favor. So I'll definitely be watching where they go uh, this week. Uh, and we will be back uh, for our election morning uh, or election pre-election evening uh, talk next week. Thanks, guys.